Let's be real. Starting, running, and scaling a coaching business can feel exhausting. I mean, you've got the marketing, the hustling, the selling, all that stuff you didn't realize you would need to master when you decided to start a coaching business. For anything like me, you started your coaching business to change the world, to improve the lives of others while improving your own. Well, the truth is, Running a business doesn't have to be as hard as many of us have made it out to seem. And you don't even have to do all that hustling stuff if you don't want to. You really can get into flow, into your zone of genius, and get back to the work you were sent here to do. But you have to ask for help. You have to be willing to work in new ways. You have to be willing to open up your mind to mentors who might be doing it differently than you've ever considered. And you have to be willing to actually implement new ways of thinking and running your business. If you're up for that, stay tuned. I'm Hannah Hermanson, your certified coach, international speaker, author, and yes, the founder of Dream Life is Real Life and the host of the show. And I've been able to help hundreds of coaches build, scale, and enjoy their online businesses. Essentially, make their dream life their real life. And if you'd like help improving your business life and get your coaching business to the next level, we might be able to help you. Head on over to dreamlifeisreallife.com slash show to get all the resources and episodes that we talk about in this community. You can join our Facebook community. You can find me on Instagram. But more importantly, if you're really ready to integrate what you learn here today and on other episodes, then you'll be able to set up a complimentary 10-minute chat with my team. Again, at dreamlifeisreallife.com slash show, no strings attached. We love getting to know you and seeing what are the right next moves for you. But now let's get on to the show. In this podcast, you'll find the real people, concrete tactics, and weekly motivation and inspiration to make your dream life and business real. I started this podcast to bring you the role models that I never had. We talk to successful entrepreneurs, freedom seekers, business owners, and people living life on their own terms. To be a true leader, to create the legacy you desire, and to live in alignment, you need a tribe lifting you up. And I've made it my mission to be your tribe, to bring them to your ears at least, Because after all, we are all in this together. Now, let's cue the music. Hello, hello. How is everyone this fine day? I am wonderful because I have a fun guest and friend uh, to share with you all today, Ron Ben-Joseph. He is all about presentation skills, storytelling, and a content coach that has spent the last 15 years empowering professionals to overcome their fears of sharing their messages and stories by organizing their content into a tight narrative structure that is the basis for all effective storytelling, which we know is essential in marketing these days. So having worked with Broadway actors as well as heart-centered professionals in fields ranging from health and wellness to finance and real estate, Ron is proud to have helped hundreds of people find their voice and share it confidently. So thank you for being willing to share your voice today. Thank you, Hannah. I'm excited to be here. This is this is awesome. You're the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had such a good kind of organic conversation a few months ago, thanks to a mutual friend and you know, learning more about you. I I want to continue the conversation and uh, share it widely, which you're all about, right? Awesome. Absolutely, yeah, big time. Yeah. So I'm super curious if um, you know marketing and video and copy was something that you you know were passionate about as a young person or where you kind of zoned into this niche for yourself? What's the story? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I definitely, like, since I was about four years old, I remember telling my my dad and my grandparents, I was like, I'm going to be a director. I want to be a director. I didn't even know what a director was at that time. Uh, but I, just, I remember just being like, I want to direct. And that was kind of my driving force throughout high school. Uh, and then I, I had kind of, uh, I had a great social time in high school. Like I did not have like a crazy, horrible experience. I had an awesome social experience. I did, but the theater for me, breaking into the theater was not something that I was, 
Uh, I didn't even know how to do, I didn't know how to be a team member. I didn't know how to audition. I didn't know anything. And I, and as a result, I just became very arrogant and just felt entitled and didn't make shows. And I, I was so frustrated and it depressed the hell out of me. And I, like I tried for three years and it just felt like I was beating my head against the wall. Finally, senior year, I was like, I was like, I'm done, but I, I'm, I'm not going to try anymore. And around that time too, I lost, I, I, I was a bad student. I gained a lot of weight in high school. And then I, so I lost a bunch of weight, got my grades up. I'm like, I'll just focus on that. Got my grades up. And then like the first show of the season that of senior year, uh, someone asked me, they're like, Hey, we'd love for you to audition. I was like, no, I'm done. I don't need this anymore. I'm over it. Well, like one thing led to another mm-hmm. and they, they convinced me. I was like, okay, I'll try again. I got cast. And then the rest of the year, I like, I completely changed my behavior. I wasn't a jerk. I was like very humble. And I, and I did all the shows and it was awesome. After that, I never wanted to go through that again. <laughs> I never yeah. wanted to like work my way up again in 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 uh, in a academic setting. So I did go to college, but at that time I started a theater company, and I was so committed wow. to storytelling and to directing and to creating opportunities that even again, barely graduating high school, I just I had this vision of how to create a world and how to tell the stories I wanted to tell. And over the years, that evolved into teaching, uh, and I found that was teaching kind of satiated that need for me to create and work all the time. So I was like, Oh, if I teach Mm -hmm. acting, I don't have to find the money to produce the show or get the actors together. They're already there. I'll just do it that way. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was growing and advancing as a director, but um, and and working a lot, but it it, like, I was like, Oh, teaching is kind of cool because it's like they pay you, (laughs) which Mm -hmm. in, which in theater is like a cool concept, you know? (laughs) Um, So I I eventually got my master's in communication media and theater because I didn't want to pick. Um, and, and then I started teaching, uh, public speaking and I was like, this is it, man. I was like, this is like the fucking coolest right here. Cause it combined everything I was doing. Mm. And I really started to see the beginning of like, I'm, I'm fitting in. I'm like, this yeah. is my world. Cause I was performing at that time too. I was, I was, uh, emceeing events like Miss Illinois pageant, things like that. And, and I was like, public speaking, like, this is so much more freeing mm. than, acting where you have to go and memorize lines and all that stuff. And yeah, like, dude, I can relate. And I wasn't expecting to (laughs) my, um, my most embarrassing moment. I don't think I've ever like shared this in like the real or the internet world. (laughs) The most embarrassing moment is freshman year of high school, wanting to audition for the theater for, I, I wanted to do speaking like, but they only had a musical. So I had to go, on stage, my like second day of high school ever in my little graphic tee and braces as all the like cool theater kids and singers and dancers are watching and sing like eight bars or something. Oh. And it was a train wreck, like so bad. Somehow though, the choir director took a liking to me and he put me in as just like a choir girl. So I succeeded. Yeah. Like I could be a part of it. I got to hang out with my friends, but I refused to audition ever again. I was like, I developed a good relationship, which I think we're going to talk about with the choir director. Um, he's been like a lifelong mentor now. So I just never had to audition uh, again because that is like so much pain of like at that age, putting yourself out there, like wanting to be good and like trying and then being just so bad at it. <laughs> For me, it was singing. I can tell you're late to be like, screw that. I'm not putting myself through that again. I'm going to find other ways to still get what I want. For you, it was like, I'm still going to get paid to do this thing. But you kind of navigated it as I did so that it wasn't, yeah. you know, the way everyone else was doing it. Right? What? Oh, you nailed it. And like, um, first of all, what, what musical was it? Oh, my gosh. My freshman year, it was Les Mis. It was like the most gnarly musical. Like, the songs are hard. It's French half of the time. And That's I, not an easy musical. Yeah. Like that. Oh, she, like that. You went in, you went all in like, yeah, that's yeah. singing. Yep. Yeah. No, I was just a choir girl. I probably limp, lip sync for half of it, but it was the social element and like my friends were all doing it and I wanted to get involved, you know? So I did a, I was it. So I, I got, um, I got divorced last year and it's so like in a good way. Like we're, we're all friends, co-parents, like it was like the least dramatic divorce, but my like post debaucherous act, uh, our post divorce debaucherous act was, uh, instead of like just going in, like just partying, I like did a musical. I was in a musical and, um, 
as an actor. Really and, just feel uh, all the feels. <laughs> I was, and, and of course I played this part of a dude who got stood up at the altar and was like on a boat with the woman that he loved. And it was just like, I, I shouldn't have done it. It was just like so painful, you know? But, uh, but I remember it was like, and I had really, um, I auditioned because I wanted to sing. It was a, it was a disco musical. So it had all these famous 70s songs and my, my sing voice is really high. So it was like, Oh, I'll, like I booked it, you know, like I got it. But, um, uh, I sang like some really high songs. And so when it came time to sing in the chorus, I was like, I was such a diva. I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I can't, it's, <laughs> I don't do chorus, but, <laughs> but that's how much of a jerk I am. I am like, I can't, I can't waste the gift at any rate. I feel you, sister. Um, and you know, and, and you nailed it. Is that it, it's been a long journey. It's been a, a solid twenty-year journey where each step I was like, okay, so I was directing Broadway actors, and I'm like, oh, like I love directing, but I hate these people. <laughs> like oh, I, yeah. you know, some not all of them, but like some of them just I didn't have the wherewithal to to really be a leader. Is the truth of it? So it wasn't their fault. It was my fault. But I didn't know how to circumvent and how to deal with their what their needs were, you know, and, and be, and be a leader. Cause I was all about me like a, like a, you know, like a, like a kid, <laughs> like I, I just was all about me. So it took years of, of coming close. So um, I have a comedy show I do. I love that. But it, again, it was like, I love pieces of this, but it took years for it all to kind of coalesce yeah. and come together. And literally just in the past two years, it's really fleshed out and come together. And I'm like, I get to do what I love every day. And I feel ever more like an artist. Um, and That's I have friends. Really- yeah. yeah. Well, that's just really the beauty of entrepreneurship. And maybe you have creative friends or just this um, pursuit of joy that if you don't have the the mindset, the exposure, the network to own that, it can be really frustrating to watch other people like us be like, we don't want to do that. So we're not. We're going to create it and do it a different way. And this is something that I really appreciated about you because we had a conversation about um, business strategy and marketing. And you're like, oh, I just like talk to people that I like and I don't do any of the stuff they tell you to do. And I, even as entrepreneurs, I think sometimes we forget that we don't have to play by anyone else's rules. We literally can follow joy and let the other pieces fall where they need to. That's hard if you yeah. haven't had the experience of trying it. And you seem like you're really willing to like do a bunch of stuff, try it on, and then follow the joy from there. And, and, and do, yeah, a hundred percent. Cause I, I, um, my friends that were in the industry that were, you know, they were talented from day one. I wasn't talented from day one. It took me years to discover my abilities and to work on it. But for a lot of my friends, like they positively, they, they knew what their gift was. They went for it and they, um, they struggled because like it was, it was different when it was full time and, and, you know, and, and they went after their dreams. But when you go after your dreams in that sense, you're asking people for a lot of jobs. You're, you're, you're constantly like, Hey, can I do this? Can I do this? Whereas you're right with entrepreneurship. When I decided uh, that I wasn't going to just work my way up in a college system, the first thing I did was I started getting on the phones with, and I lived in Chicago. I started getting on the phone with theater companies and literally within a month, I was like, my schedule was packed with, and I wasn't, I didn't go to a, like a fancy college. Like I, it didn't matter. I was, my schedule was packed with big producers, big directors in Chicago, people that are now like Tony award not, uh, winners and things, you know, I was able to create these meetings and I was like, why would I ever, you know, from here on in I, subconsciously, I think I was like, why would I ever ask for a job when I can create it and create the connections mm. to support that job? You know, mm-hmm. um, once you, you're right. Once you try on different hats and create opportunities for yourself, it's, it's, I think it's really hard to go back. And, and, yeah. To your point from before, I see so many people now, uh, you know, with Corona, with quarantining, where the, you know, film and theater, just especially theater, obviously shut down. And I've had lots of conversations with, with actors and and people in the industry where I'm like, here's how you take your skills that you have. And I, and I, I met with big time, like, like, like people that were heroes of mine when I was really in the theater world 20 years ago, these guys that are older now, I met with them and I was like, yo, here's how you take what you're doing naturally in theater and how to apply it to the digital world. And here's our, some strategy to get money in the door. And a lot of them just couldn't like, couldn't yeah. switch the mind, you know? Yeah. Mindset. They're ingrained in that one track of doing things. And that's yeah. why, yeah. Like being entrepreneurs and both of us from a youngish age saying like, well, I'm not going to do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're more open to maybe hopping into different tracks or ways of, of doing things. Um, and something you said about just picking up the phone, that is the advice I want to give my former self 
over and over and over. When people ask me about mistakes I made or what I would have done differently starting a business or being an entrepreneur, hit the sidewalk, pick up the phone. I love that you just kind of dove into that. I think so many people starting out, like coaches especially, they want to present themselves, make a fancy website, have a logo, have everything in place. But like we both experienced, it's in the conversations. It's in picking up the phone, hitting the sidewalk that you actually get momentum and clarity. And Would you yes. Agree? Oh, good. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. And, and, um, something that I talk to my, so I primarily work, I have one male client who is the epitome of a male client, but like I love working with him so much. Like he, we, we had, um, he had a, a, a quick thing that happened this morning. He had a presentation and like, literally I like, I had a packed day. I fit him in. I love this guy. He's the best. Like, but literally he's a tough guy. Like, but I love working with him. So it's my one male client. The rest of my clients are awesome female entrepreneurs. And something that we talk a lot about is this notion, because, you know, they're told by coaches too, to pick up the phone. And and a lot of times it's the, the idea of pick up the phone is a very male driven concept of like, and I don't mean to generalize here, but this is my experience is that it's, you know, we think like, a uh, boiler room. We think like car salesmen. We think like, hey, 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 hey I got you know, like you got to buy from me. You got to buy from me. And I think the concept of picking up the phone that I teach or that I coach on is this notion of like, who would benefit from my services? Who is having the struggle? And who would I love to work with? I, I like to when when we had networking events back in the day a year ago, over a year ago, uh, I'd go look at that space as like a networking event as a room full of potential people I want to play with or, or plays I want to direct, right? Versus I think people go, okay, this, it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. I'm going to, I'm just going to sift through till I get a client. That's a gross kind of forceful, masculine, ego-driven way of doing it. I think the feminine way that I've learned beautifully from my incredible clients is nurture, is bond, like, and is try to help and leverage Oh, I have this skill. You have that skill. Let's leverage that. You, I want to get your skill out there. I want, I want people to know about your skill. Here's how we can create a, a process and a flow to make that happen. Right. So, so yeah. pounding the pavement, making phone calls is just, it's like finding people that are in alignment with your value and like that could really benefit from your expertise and what you bring to the world. Strategic partnerships. Yeah. Right? You gave me really great advice when I was thinking about adding a done for you copywriting offer. And you were like, yeah, that's great. Like talk to web developers, talk to social media managers. Like you gave me some really great ideas about these strategic partnerships because coming from that place of like, I have this value to add. It looks like this might be really helpful for what you're doing is how you avoid that salesy energy, right? When you're focused on what they need and how you can position yourself within their business, develop a beneficial partnership. Um, It's not sales. It's really this more feminine approach. So I would love for you to give us the masculine feminine 101 for people who are like boys, girls, like, what do you mean? Explain those energies to us. So I, I, I hope I'm saying it right. This is what I've learned the past few years because um, it comes a lot. It comes out in the work that I do with, and I, I mean, I a big percentage of my female clients are coaches. Um, so the, what my understanding of it is, is the masculine feminine. Feminine is much more flow, much more creative, much more... Um, like a nurturing energy that's uprooting, that's supportive. And again, it's, it's the act of creation, right? Um, masculine, and, and, and again, these can both vacillate. So it's not good or bad, man, woman, it's masculine, feminine. It's when they're healthy, the feminine is the act of creation. It's, it's the process of birthing, right? Which makes sense. When healthy, the masculine is the support. So I, I had a client, she said it beautifully. Um, she said that the masculine is like the is like the the riverbed and the feminine is the river. Yes, I've heard it that like the masculine is the mug and the feminine is like the liquid. Like it's flowy, but it needs that cup to hold it to like be productive energy. Exactly. So that that's a hundred percent it, right? So male is structure, and then female could be content, <laughs> like creative flow, right? That's how I've learned it. Um, and you know, and and and. For example, like to, you know, to kind of tie it into what you're saying about like networking and, and relationship building. Um, I, the, the woman that kind of changed my life, she's my best friend now. Her name is Megan Conter. 
Um, and she runs a group, a, a national or sorry, international group now called the Danes, uh, where there's members from all over the world. Yeah. And it's a phenomenal, um, high achieving female entrepreneur group for women that are just like super high achievers. And she told me up front, uh, I met her three years ago now. She told me up front, she's like, don't go, you know, when you're starting off your business as a coach or in any really any setting, don't go for business to business. Go for business to, I'm sorry, don't go business to customer. Do business, <clears throat> business to business as I'm choking here. Okay. <coughs> B2B, right? Instead of B2C. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the way that looks in, excuse me, I'm like choking. The way <laughs> that that works really well in networking is she's like, and it sounds so simple, I never thought of it. She's like, you go up to the person that runs the group and you say, here's what I do. Here's specifically who are my people, like who I really serve and help. And who do you know that is that? So let's say I work with female coaches that are looking to create a slew of content to market their services as they are trying to empower this demographic or something, right? Great. <clears throat> I never in my wildest dreams thought to do that. I never thought to go to the person running the event who knows everyone conceivably. Yeah. I would just go and just stand there and be like, who's cool? <laughs> or yes, and who's cool, but also like who's not talking to someone? <laughs> right because i don't want to be the the jerk that like enters the room or that enters the conversation so i think like the notion of going up front and saying hey can you introduce me to someone yeah that is the game changer and to me that's the feminine approach finding yeah. the delta finding the flow finding the rhythm yeah. right instead of like forcing stuff to happen yeah and i want anyone who's listening who's frustrated with their marketing right now to hear this there is no one size fits all what works for her might not work for you because when we put ourselves into the wrong structure, for me, it used to be Facebook ads. I was hitting the pavement, okay, with Facebook ads, just plug it in, do the systems, track the numbers. I wasn't having any fun in my business. And because of that, because I hated the function, it wasn't working. Now, I have worked with experts, people who have made millions of dollars from Facebook ads. I took their blueprint. They looked at my stuff and it still didn't work because it wasn't in alignment. And I hear this all the time from coaches who are like, I just, I just need the copy and paste thing. I just need like someone to give me the blueprint. And if you're not choosing strategies that feel good, like going to the person at the front of the room and saying, introduce me to coaches, um, it's not going to work. And that's really hard to hear when you just want to like copy and paste and like do the blueprint game, but you've got to work with someone like we're talking about who like takes a look at your strengths, your assets and, and creates a strategy that, that fits your personality as well. And I don't mean to again, generalize, but I've met so many clients that have been, uh, have fallen prey to snake oil salesmen that are, you know, they sell you on, on that one size fits all solution. If you do this, I promise you, it, you will get results. And it's, and it, someone else might, but it, again, we, you're, you, you, you nailed it is that we have to be, I think it's as, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, like you have to be aware and like, and sensitive and kind to the voice you got. I was equated to like being like an X-Men, you know, like, like the superheroes um, where it's like, you know, not every X-Men or ex woman, right? Like not every ex person um, gets like the pick of the litter of superpowers. Some of them have like weird shit. Like they can use their hair as like a lasso or something. You know, like it's so bizarre what they have these powers. But not everyone is Cyclops or Wolverine or you know Jean Grey. Like some people, sometimes you you have what you think is not a great superpower, but mm. if you leverage it effectively, yes, whatever it is, it it is it will solve something for some. It will save yeah. someone's day, right? And like that's where being kind and sensitive to the superpower that you do have and unearthing and being like, this is it. This is awesome. And using that as an authentic or using the understanding of it authentically to channel it and to, and mm-hmm. to bring it to your people. That is 10 times, 10,000 times more effective than one size fits all, which works for the most bombastic, loud, uh, extroverted people in the room, right? Like, oh yeah, if you do Facebook ads and it's all about you, 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 but so many people are not all about themselves. They're all about their clients and they want to see their clients grow. And yeah. so does that make sense? So if you, if yeah. you really leverage and channel your authentic powers and put it in a way that's conducive that you can repeat and that's scalable, yeah, I think that's the difference. 
Yeah, honestly, for me, it was self-awareness that started to make my marketing work because for mm. almost well, two years, a year, I was really frustrated with Facebook ads. And it was like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with the picture? What's wrong? What's wrong? like, and it was just so draining to be, always be looking at what's wrong and trying to like fix and mold myself. Right. Yeah. And then when it came down to self-awareness, learning this like feminine energy and like building a business based on networking and conversations and like organic content. And then it was like, yeah. Oh wow. Like there wasn't something wrong with me. I was just like in the wrong room. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like same thing. Like I felt so guilty um, for so long because I'd heard from, from marketing people like, Oh, you, you, the only way to launch or the only way to have a business, same thing. You got to have this and a back page and a front page and a blah, 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 SEO. And a, yeah. Yeah. And I just had the best and I'm, I'm beyond grateful. And I say this with respect to, as we talked about, like respect to people that, that had a really rough 2020, I had the best financial year of my life. And the only thing I did different, well, two things I, you know, we all had to move online. So I was more strategic about who I was connecting with on Facebook, on LinkedIn um, and setting up meetings through networks. I was asking my connectors here in, in I'm in Denver, but like I was asking connectors in general, Hey, um, I'm doing this. Do you know anyone that might need that? And they, they're connectors. They love, they said, absolutely. That will help these three women. Or, um, and then the other thing I did was I did a little like same kind of thing, like a low key uh, talk show that I just posted on, you know, I shot on zoom, po- posted on Facebook, posted on LinkedIn. And that got me so much business uh, mm-hmm. because not to say that every video I posted got more than 30 views, um, but maybe they got five likes on LinkedIn I would go follow those people that liked it. I would, you know, yep. comment, like, and share their stuff. Yep. And then we'd set up meetings and then boom, they became clients, you know, I or I'd, or I'd have a client or someone that I wanted to be a client on the show. And then they were like, Oh, I loved it. Do you do this other thing? I'm like, yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. I think now of every piece of content, conversation, post, whatever, yeah. as the, as a funnel, I was banging my head against the wall with the same funnel and Facebook, throwing my money down the drain. And now with this more feminine approach, it's like, cool, great. I'm going to put this out. Six people like it. Cool. Maybe I'll have a conversation with them. I'm going to do another thing tomorrow and see who wants to have a conversation about that. So again, if you're frustrated with marketing, perhaps experiment with this idea that you get to show up every day with a new funnel and engage people in conversation. I believe that conversation is going to be the best marketing strategy of 2021. Yeah. People are sick of being yelled at essentially. I mean, literally I feel like I'm yelled at when I go on Instagram. Um, they're, they're not reading as much. They're not spending as much time on one post at a time. And so it's going to have to be about pulling people into like actual conversation, not just post and hope, but post follow up chat be curious that that's my, you know, it's what few days into 2021. And that's my feeling. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> and I think you're awesome. You're like, you're like the Larry King of uh, social media. You're like, what do you think? Um, <laughs> Sometimes I just say things and I'm like, am I, I just start talking and I'm still talking and I'm like, give me some feedback here. I'll, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> so that's my strategy of like, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think you're so, uh, two things. I think you're so right. Um, I think too, and I, I, I'm not saying this uh, negatively politically, but I think politically there's been on social media, especially I have a client that talks about it. She's like 2016, regardless of where you're at on the, you know, on the political scale, 2016, both sides got angry. Both sides started pushing each other to the corner. And I have clients that are, completely polar opposite of what I believe politically. And we have great conversations about how everyone feels backed into a corner. So this notion of yelling, 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 I have a feeling that that is going to stop, you know, like, like again, because on both sides, I just think, you know, like, again, I'm saying it with respect to both sides of the, of the coin here. Um, the other thing is I got, like the other thing I'm thinking is, um, You know, it's it's like surprising for me and kind of validating for me to hear that you that for you it didn't just kind of come natural, the the shift and and the mindset switch and and just like for you as a copywriter as a coach who was working with a company like when did that happen for you like I'm I'm floored like when were you like oh I got to try something different and like and like how did you get the skills to do that like that's fascinating to me. It's really fascinating. Yeah, this is a great question. So 
I was feeling frustrated in marketing, but that translated into other places of my life where I just was like drained. I wasn't having fun. I wasn't remembering my why. Um, and I was in a goal setting thing with some peers and we were deciding what's our next goal for the quarter. Right. And I'm like, okay, my, the thing I want to achieve is just like better energy. Like I can't put my finger on it, but I knew I wasn't being as productive or happy or living up to my full potential. And so as the problem solver I am, I was like, all right, here's like five things I can do to improve my energy. Maybe I need to give up gluten. Like this is, I was thinking about like physical things. I was like, yeah. give up gluten, do more yoga. Um, I don't know, like t- sleep training. Like I had all these crazy, like white girl ideas. And as it would be, someone in that group was like, you know what? I actually need to talk to my friend Sage. Sage has been on the show and he's a meditation and breath work coach. And the slowing down and getting quiet and actually seeking like alignment in myself and my energy is what allowed me to start to look at marketing, not as like this grind, this job, but as an opportunity. But isn't that interesting? It's not like I could take a webinar to learn that. (laughs) It was like I had to get in touch, again, the self-awareness piece. Yeah. I, you know, I'm from Chicago, like I said. And so I always talk about in my, in my, in my show, I'm like, um, in my comedy show, I'm like coming from Chicago to Colorado, we moved here about five years ago, almost six years. And, uh, the first thing people are like, what are you manifesting? What are you manifesting? I was like, Matt, what the fuck? Like I'm from Chicago. What are you going to manifest a sunny day? Not going to happen. I'm from Southern Wisconsin. I'm, I get it. Yeah. Oh, you totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> like what the, yeah. you know, just, Cause you're in, you're in, inside for nine to 10 months of misery. Like you, you manifesting is on it. But when I, when we moved here, um, we lost everything. And like my, my then wife and I, like we, we had a baby and we just couldn't find our footing. We both had businesses and just everything kind of came crashing down and we had to rebuild. And I was like, you know, uh, like I, 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 met, I found a coach and she was like, you're on the floor right now. But the biggest thing, and I was so surprised she was talking about laws, like laws of attraction, shifting mindset and she was so scientific about it and she was talking about quantum physics and all this stuff and i was just like okay like whatever i remember she's like she's like you're on the floor in shock right now she's like you are so depressed she's like these things if you just implement quick strategies it's going to work and literally within a week i had manifested after months of n- not bringing in any money i was or let's say weeks like i manifested like a hundred dollars to pay her and that's when I started seeing like, Oh wow, this is real. And then within six weeks of the day we started, I manifested like a check for a thousand bucks from someone that I met in a parking lot six months earlier. And like that thousand dollars might've as well have been like 5 million at that point. Cause that was unheard. I was so low to the ground. And that's when I really started seeing like self-awareness, alignment, energy, all this stuff you're talking about. It is for real. It is for real. And it's, again, if you're in the wrong room, Mm, like I was, and you're being told, like, just give it more time, give it more money, just work the machine, just like hustle, 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 hustle. It is so friggin' annoying to hear more people sitting there telling you it's about mindset. Right, right. When you don't know what that looks like, it's like, shut up. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing when people are like, oh, it's not about the money. Like, if you don't have money, it's about the money. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And so I'm curious and I want to, I'm curious for you, like you, you got the scientific element, you got some evidence of it. Um, And so how are you now integrating again, this kind of like feminine or like law of attraction? How, what does this look like day to day for you now? So it really took, so that was 2017. It wasn't until 2019 where it became real, like, like um, consistently real. I mean, it was real. Like I saw so many, so many amazing things happened from 2017 to 2019, but it was still a grind. It, it wasn't like a, a pile of money fell in my lap because I wasn't emotionally ready to manifest at that level, you know? Um, so the, like you're asking about now though. So, so it's so ingrained in my head now where the best example was last you know, last year in March, um, so things really started picking up in August of 2019. Like, and I was like, oh, okay, I made it. I'm here. And I was, I was making a decent living. And then it just kept getting better and better. And then uh, January, February, I had record breaking months. And I was like, oh my God. Like, this, I was like David on Shit's Creek. I was like, 
oh my God. <laughs> um, and I was like, this is amazing. And then March happens, then shutdown happens. And, and the, the first two weeks, I was, people are like, you know, just jumping off the ship. They're like, I don't know if I'm going to make any more money. I don't know what's going on with my business. Everybody was scared. And I didn't sign anyone up for like two weeks. And that was weird. Uh, and I was like, okay, here we go. Like all that mindset shit, like all that, like positivity, like all that stuff. Let's see. Let's see what it, you know, like we can make a choice right now to like chicken little, like the, the, the sky is falling or we could really dig deep and believe it because it's worked. It's changed my whole life. Um, and I was still roommating with my, with my, uh, former wife and my daughter, you know, we were in a two bedroom apartment stuck here and we're like, okay, let's support each other. Let's, if one of us loses our job, then like, it we're, we're, let's just stick this out. Let's, you know, so now we're like really having to stay positive. And I was supposed to move yeah. out at that point. Wow. So it was like everything at once. And I was like, okay, how do we put this to, to, to good use? And shifted my thinking right i had like a day i was like okay let's take thursday let's be depressed and again i'm living you know we're stuck in an apartment with our with our awesome high energy child who's four years old that jumping off the walls and i was like okay how do we how do we stay focused how do we how do we maintain this thing so i made that shift stuck with it found the good like really dug down into the belief that life is happening for me not against me all that stuff um or the one i like to think is life is conspiring to help me i don't i read that somewhere i forget where i read but life is conspiring so everywhere i'm looking for proof that life is just has this big conspiracy that i'm awesome and they're going to help me it's you know universe is going to help me and literally every month yeah grew 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 the business yeah. grew and i'm like Oh my God, like, all right, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. I was ready to work at Walmart. I was like, I'll go yeah. work at Walmart. But does that make sense? So, so I dug yeah. down yeah. and it worked. It all worked. It was amazing. I, I'm such a believer now. I wanna, I'm debating about being a speaker about mindset because God knows people need more like pasty white guys talking about mindset. But like, it's, uh, it, it's yeah. unreal. Five years ago, I would have shot myself, not shot myself, but like metaphorically, you know? But it, we think of it as this grandiose overnight, oh my God, my dream house just landed on my head. But it's the moment to moment decisions to yeah. look for what you want. Because you always find what you want. I mean, you only see what you're looking for, right? I mean, if you lost a bobby pin in your house and you go looking around, you're not finding, oh my God, there's a dresser. Oh my God, there's the Tupperware. Oh my God, there's the kitchen sink. Like right. you're, you're focused on finding that bobby pin, even if it's small, even if it's hard, um, putting your energy there or putting it on all the problems. And it's those mm -hmm. little choices. It's like micro decisions that you make throughout the day that then compound into a great month of business, but it's not like this. Oh my God. All of a sudden, again, it's back to this like magic cure idea or like there's some like overnight success thing that happens. Um, so I love that. It's just like, yeah. okay, today, how do I just like, how, I don't remember exactly how you said it, but how do we support each other today? How do we make yeah. this, this doable today? Um, cause you always find what you're looking for. The, um, you know, it's, you brought up the, like the idea of like the big house and stuff. And I think that's, that's the, that's what I didn't understand. My mind wasn't ready to, 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 uh, to embrace this when I was first, like, you know, we we're living in my parents' basement with our newborn. Like we, I just wasn't ready to go there. But the biggest thing I've learned too, is that like, um, like you said, it's more of more, you can only manifest more of more and that we think, oh, I'm going to manifest this big million dollar home. And that's where people go off the rails because they, they go for something that they're not ready to accept. For some people, a million dollar homes, a million dollar home is nothing. Like they don't, they have no emotional attachment to it. They just manifest it and then it appears. For other people, there's guilt and shame and there's all this stuff that needs to be cleared before you can really embrace it and bring it in. Cause otherwise you're building it on a foundation of more insecurity, more lack of self-worth. So I, the, like the funniest example that I, I found also this, this year specifically, my daughter, um, who's five now, um, rightfully so, has been wanting a car <laughs> for two years, like the electrical cars and my kids from oh, my gym. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know, right? Like, but like those little cars that like drive, you know, like she's oh, fully Oh, yeah. Driving. I had a little mini Jeep. I know what you mean. Yes. Of course you did. Because <laughs> so my generation, uh, we always wanted the mini Jeeps um, and the mini cars, but we never, it was like too expensive, you know? So for a year and a half, maybe. She's been talking about, I want a car. I want a car. I want it, like a car I can drive and stuff. Right. And so it's, it's now she's like putting in my head 
And there's other things that she talks about that she forgets. She's just not committed to. So she's like, I want this. And then she moves on. Right. But she kept bringing up car. So it's like, you could, I could see it. It was so fascinating. I could see it that she was magnetically pulled towards a car. Like it wasn't, she wasn't being bratty about it or spoiled about it. She's just like, I want a car. I want a car. And she kept saying it without any, like, I want it. She was just very affirmed about it. So I believed her. Then this year, Black Friday sales, um, I saw a car and it was like, it was like 200 bucks, but it was 125. So it was, I was shocked how quickly I grabbed the credit card, you know, and like ordered it online and like the, like the process with, it was a huge fucking box. So I went and got in and I needed a different car and all these things. It was, I didn't have an ounce. There wasn't a moment of questioning if I'm getting that car. Cause she manifested the hell out of it. You know, she yeah. had no attachment. She had no guilt. My, I never like, my, like I growing up, my dad made me always feel guilty about asking for things. She had no, like, she just asked for it. It was real for her. And I think that's what I see that like when people ask for big things, that they're comfortable with. They have no shame around. They're completely mm. open to everyone else is ready to support. The universe is ready to support just like I was. Cause she, mm-hmm. it wasn't, there was no, there was no fighting about it. She's like, I want a car. No resistance. There was, and it felt I real want... for her. Yes. That's she so wasn't funny. like, she wasn't like dad. Like, I know it's so expensive. Yeah. She didn't no, I want a car. Yeah. So I was like, Oh, she's right. You know, does that make sense? Like that parallel? hundred percent. It reminds me of the book by Abraham, you know, Esther Hicks, ask and it is given. And it's like, ask for it and then let it go and wait to receive it. But when you block the receiving by doubting or complaining or not looking, not seeing it, not looking for it, um, that's when you miss the manifestations because they are always happening. It's trippy until you've had these experiences. So I hope people can, uh, think in their own life a time when you've said wouldn't it be nice if there was a bathroom at the end of this hike and then there it was <laughs> like that yeah. that's evidence that you manifested something you called that into your reality and you brought up a great point my so my my former wife she would always say i would tell her like oh i just see you know i, I just see this vision i'm i'm going to be performing in a show and it's going to be successful and all these things and she and she was so smart you know this is before we we had done the work and and knew like how it works. She was like, I, 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 she's like, I believe it. I believe it hundred percent. I don't think it's going to happen the way you want it to, or the way you think it will, or I forgot how she said it, but it's not the way that you are committed to it happening. And I think that is what has changed and made me a much happier person is like you said, like you, you drop it and then let go of the attachment. High so many, commitment, low attachment, high commitment, low attachment. So I was committed to being a storyteller. I was committed to using storytelling for healing, humor for healing, um, I was committed to working every single day and you don't as like, you know, movie stars at maybe not the highest level, but like, like mid-level movie stars, like they're not working every day. You know, like I, I saw, I heard a podcast with, with like this dude who's like very famous and he's like, yeah, he's like, I, he's like, he's like, I checked my calendar. I worked three months last year, not mm-hmm. during COVID. This is a few years ago, mm-hmm. three months total of work. Right. So I wanted to work every day. That was a value system. What I did was I detached from it has to be in theater, it has to be in film, it has to be comedy clubs, whatever it was. I detached from that and I was like, how do I make this a reality every day and how do I accept it? So I accepted the form that it came in and found out I was happier than ever. So many people, I think, again, drop off when they don't get the million dollar home or they don't get yeah. the million dollar home on that street with that color, with that, da, 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 you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That reminds me of another um, thing that I believe in. And that is if the dream is in you, it is for you. And this goes back to like, don't question it. Like you see yourself on stage, like, great. Like let that live there and keep pursuing the joy back to what we talked about um, at the beginning. So I want to put a little bow on this gift that you've given us of so many gems already, um, which is a few last questions to really um, tie this together. So if people are listening and they're like, all right, I want to do this thing. I want to manifest it. I'm ready for my dreams to be my real life. Um, what is one thing people can do today to get yeah. them a step closer to their dreams? An immediate action step. Yeah. Great question. And it's like, I totally, it's so funny. I'm like, I feel like a, like that's a my masculine, coach. that's my masculine, like bombarding this feminine energy conversation, but, no, but you structured it. 
<laughs> you funneled it. I thought that was beautiful. You structure. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. And I'm going to listen to the show now. You're good. You're real good. <laughs> um, you know, the, in, in the, I always tell people to watch the, the, cause this is what my coach told me. And I, I was surprised by it at the time. Watch the secret, like watch the video of the secret um, or read the book or whatever. Um, and in, in the, in the video, they, I think it's still on Netflix. Um, I'm sure you can find a copy. Uh, they said something like the universe doesn't know the difference between like a cup of coffee or like a house, you know? And so I would say the, the first thing that I always invite people to do when we are trying to open up a new channel of some kind, whether it be a new performance, a new podcast, a book, or whatever, um, I go, let's clear out like all the negative self-talk before you can even address what you want. We have to make room for you to accept it and receive it. Right. So it's like, if you think about it, like a closet full of clothes that you don't wear anymore um, and don't look good on you. Yeah. Like why get new clothes? Where are you going to find them? Like, how are you going to put them in there? So get rid of those clothes, like get rid of that shit. Like, so what I do is I always just take out a notebook and I'm like, <laughs> uh, and I write out all the negative thoughts. You won't be able to, to do this because, and, and, and I'm trying to find out where those voices are coming from a lot of times from my parents, but um, you know, whose voices are these? And by the sheer nature of writing them on paper and getting them out of you, they're not in you anymore. So you can, you can toss that notebook aside. You can burn it, whatever you want to do with it. Then you're left with like, okay, what's at the core of what I want? What's, what's the real value? What's important to me? And then you can start, like, I would say start, it doesn't really matter, start small or big, but I think most people can accept, start small. Um, I know people talk about like, think about someone that you haven't thought about for a while and see if they call you. But don't be attached. If they don't call you in the next week, oh, this doesn't work. Go find proof that you are not a piece of shit. <laughs> like I was, I would say that like, go find proof that you're awesome. Go find like, like, um, Oh, this like sitting in traffic. Oh, this is awesome. This is so helpful because I get to like, listen to that song I wanted to listen to on my phone or, or listen to a podcast or right. Like find out how like everything that's happening is not for a reason, but for a fucking awesome reason. Like mm. everything that's happening right now is literally the spotlights on you and it's to make you more awesome. So again, mm-hmm. clear out all that negative self talk about any given topic and then start like small, like asking for small things. Yeah. Let, yeah. This fear journaling, I call a mind colonic and I'm really glad you brought it up because so often we want to just pack positivity shit into our brain. Like yeah. think positive, like focus on the good, like do more, like, affirming of the good things. But if your brain is full of fear and doubt and pessimism, you're just packing more shit in your brain. So I always recommend this like fear journaling first, like get out the bad, get out the voices, and then you can start to fill in what you want and the positivity. Um, So thank you for highlighting that exercise. It's uh, definitely been something life-changing for me to think more clearly and make those aligned decisions we talked about. So my last question before I take up your whole afternoon shit chatting here is where can listeners continue this conversation with you and learn more about the work that you do? Yeah. So if listeners are like, they want to create their own podcast or they want to uh, do DIY videos or, um, or writing books, any kind of content that they want to bring out of themselves that they know it's like sitting on the tip of their, on the right on their nose. They're like, I can, I can see it. I can feel it, but I don't know how to put it out there because it is hard to create these things in a vacuum. Uh, uh, if you know, they can find me at artfulspeaking.com and that's one L. So artfulspeaking.com, uh, or, you know, find me on Facebook or I'm not big on Instagram, but I have an Instagram account. So Ron Ben Joseph, uh, on any of these uh, channels. And uh, yeah, I'd love to talk to you if you're, if you're cool. I don't work with everyone, but if you're cool, if you're positive, I'd love to talk to you. Artfulspeaking.com if you're cool and uh, ready to get that story out into the world, right? So, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your insight and energy with us today, Ron. Um, I will make sure we have links in the show notes so people can find you. And uh, while you're checking out Ron this week, know that I will be back next week with another inspiring guest that will help you make your dream life your real life. That's right, friends. That'll do it for our show today. But remember, if you're really ready to implement and take these ideas into action, 
then hop on over to dreamlifeisreallife.com slash show. And you can access all of the resources we talked about. And more importantly, set up a complimentary 10 minute phone call with my team so that we can help you get clarity and some concrete action steps in place. So this doesn't just become another one of those feel good moments, but an opportunity to actually make a change in your life and business because all good things come in action. So we'll see you over there at dreamlifeisreallife.com slash show and next week here on the show.